good morning students so welcome to online classes on continuation of our subject electrical and electronics measuring instruments today we are going to learn in second second chapter pmmc voltmeters and ohmmeters this topic is regarding to c18 ee 304 third semester diploma students let us recall what we have seen in first chapter and some portion of second chapter in first chapter we have cons we have completed measuring instruments terminology like measurement accuracy precision sensitivity resolution error and range terminology we have seen what do you mean by the precision it is the measure of the consistency of reproducibility of the instrument error it is a deviation of the measure and value that's a deviation of measured value from the true value of a quantity to be measured so we have seen all these terms and we classified our instruments into analog instruments and digital instruments whereas analog instruments can record the varying the amplitude of the value whereas digital instrument it will measures only two digits the one or zero and at the same time this instruments also classified based on the input supply input energy or input effects that is moving iron instruments moving coil instruments induction type instruments hot wire instruments dynamo meter type instruments and electrostatic type instruments we have seen in this so the pm mc instruments are only for dc and induction type instruments are only for ac measurements and we further classified instruments based on measuring methods one is absolute instruments another is a secondary instruments the second instruments further classified into indicating instruments recording instruments and integrating instruments we have seen the indicating instruments are showing the value to be measured in terms of indicator at that instant so the pointer moved on a calibrated scale at that instant whereas the recording instruments which gives a continuous record of the variation of the electrical quantity to be measured in a particular situation for example ecg in medical field so ecg generally example for the or seismograph and third one integrating instrument which measures the total amount of quantity supplied to a load over a given particular period that may be ampere hour meter example we have seen at the same time we have also covered what are the essential of indicating instruments like pointer calibrated scale jewelry bearings springs and torques the torques are further classified into deflecting torque for operating purpose controlling torque for restoring purpose and damping torque for nullify the oscillations of pointer at final positions and the deflecting torque can be produced based on the input variable 
quantity whether voltage or current whereas controlling torque can be produced by spring control method and gravity control method and in damping torque can be produced by air friction damping fluid friction damping and eddy current damping are used in our instruments this all are we covered at the same time we have seen the classification of errors the errors are further classified into gross error which is meant for human errors during taking the readings reading the readings and calculating the uh, readings time there some errors are done due to the we can say this is the gross errors and another important error is a systematic error the systematic error further classified into instrument errors environmental errors and observational errors the instrument errors the instrument at the time of the manufacture itself there is a defect after that during the calibration itself there may be a defects this can be avoided by the careful careness taken during this calibrations and coming to the environment environmental errors that the external conditions on instrument for example temperature pressure humidity and external magnetic field on instruments and third one is the observational errors so observation during the observation there is a wrong observations like the parallax errors the parallax error can be avoided by using the a mirrored glass in the instruments we all covered all this and last one is the random error after calculation of all systematic errors with careful even then the few more errors present in the calculations in the system those errors are known as a random errors we cannot avoid this one it is a inherently there is a errors those errors are known as a random errors so we completed this all things now coming to the second chapter we have seen our instruments are based on these principles we man we are going to manufacturing real time instruments that is moving coil instruments moving iron instruments dynamometer type instruments based on these principles in last class we have covered first the construction of moving coil instruments you can see it's a construction what it has it has the u shaped magnet and that is the permanent magnet there is a soft iron cylinder on which there is a aluminum frame rectangular aluminum frame on which a copper coil is owned the copper coil two terminals one is connected to the one phosphorus branch spring top and bottom another spring both are connected in reverse direction and it is connected to the spindle the spindle is placed on a jewelry bearings jeweled bearings that is the frictional and bearings the spindle also attached to the our mechanism air friction damping purpose fluid friction damping purpose eddy current damping purpose also provision is takes place and the spindle is connected to a pointer the pointer will 
rotate on a calibrated scale. You can see all are in the figure itself. We have all seen this thing. This is the u shaped magnet, this is a soft iron cylinder, this is an aluminum frame on which the coil and coil is placed in the spindle, spindle is placed in the jewelry bearings and it is connected one spring here, another spring here and from this one input and output will be taken out. Also the pointer is placed here, the pointer is moved on a calibrated scale. Construction of PMMC. At the same time, so we have seen the basic operation of PMMC also, how it will operate when input supply is given to this one, how it will show the reading corresponding, what is the ultimate voltage, what is the current if it is as a ammeter and voltmeter. Now let us see in this class how this instrument can be used for a large amount of quantity to quantity measured. Now, so today's object is on completion of this topic, you will be able to know, derive the expression for a deflecting torque in permanent magnet moving coil instrument, working of PMMC as a voltmeter, working of PMMC as a ammeter. Now, we are going to produce a, a deflecting torque. The diff TD directly proportional to the input variable that may be current or voltage. As we know that, so it consists of, you can see once again, here this is a magnet, north pole and you can see it, this is a north pole and south pole and these magnets are permanent magnet moving coil that means permanent magnets u shape magnet so that is generally used in our measurement applications so all nico ally or sometimes we can taken as a all co max, all co max. We can say all nico or all co max. Or sometimes we can use the fly co max also. And here is a different names, industry names generally used for this purpose. Here the combination of aluminum, nickel, cobalt. In addition to some with small amount of the iron used to make permanent magnet. In addition to this one, some amount of the copper, tin, niobin also added to make the permanent magnet to increase the magnetic property of the material. Sometimes you can observe instead of a u-shaped magnet sometimes of different shapes based on our applications we are going to uh, see different magnets having the different physical shape so that can be prepared by using up the a fine powder of the barium iron oxide barium iron oxide the magnets powder is formed in the different shape purpose okay this is already you have learned in school level. Now this magnet at the capacity nearly the field strength of each magnet range from 0 0.1 Weber's per meter square to 1 Weber per meter square strength consists. Permanent magnets. Now here at the same time you can see Second step is the, so here due to the coil, the coil is worn on a aluminum frame, the copper coil. This aluminum frame is placed on a small iron core that is uh, to reduce the reluctance between the north pole and south pole. 
and we know that this are connected to the another spring from the input is connected to the coil is second is connected to another coil is so input and what out this current is passing through this one this one and entered outside so already this is the permanent magnet there is a electromagnet so both are interaction takes place the torque is developed due to the torque stationary parts are north pole and south pole are permanent magnets whereas our the coil is placed on a spindle with help of a jeweler jeweled bearings so due to the deflecting torque is generated this deflecting torque the spindle will move one direction for example it is moving in the clockwise direction then from it is going to the from this direction once it is a moves so we know that controlling torque also applied here so here the spring you can see it here the spring once it is a moved one spring may be coiled tension and there is a loose end tight end loose end so did it act as a opposite to the deflecting torque that is known as the controlling torque here we know the controlling torque is directly proportional to the k into theta theta is a angle of moment from this to this angle so here we used the spring control for the uniform scale you can observe the scale is a uniform here not cramped so uniform scale is here with the spring control the spring control is a uniform because we know that so that is equal to e into b into t square by 12 l into theta the, the torque is produced uniform torque is produced where is the x e is the x modulus of material b is the the breadth of the the spring and t is the thickness of the spring and l is the length of the spring and theta is the moment angle so that's why we are going to get the uniform spring this is a uniform what is the reason we know sir formula basic formula e into b into t square by 12 l into theta simply we are going to this all are the we are going considering so tc directly proportional to the theta but actually so this is the terms what is the terms so we know that it is a coil coil it's phosphorus branch coil this is a this is a one type of coil yesterday we have seen so what will happen e is a x model of this material phosphorus branch material b is a this strip thickness how much thickness this is a thickness of the this one and t is the thickness b is the breadth so breadth of the how much is breadth of the this thing one l is the length of the coil and so we can say this is equal just like generally we are neglecting this one so we can write tc is directly theta so this is a base on the material and thickness length of the spring depends simply we are Controlling torque is directly proportional to theta. Okay, so due to this one, we are going to get the uniform scale, not cramped at starting and ending. It is a always a uniform, uniform scale due to the this spring controlling torque. Okay, now we have seen this all things. Now at the same time, you can observe one more thing. a concentric magnetic construction is used here you can see here so this is a concentric this is a concentric why what is the need here we use the one iron core and here we place the aluminum frame on which the copper wire mix so what is the purpose of this concentric position the concentric magnetic construction is used to get a longer angular moment of pointer so because the longer moment of so longer angular theta angular moment of pointer can be possible with using up this concentric magnetic poles okay so this already we have seen on last class now what we have, what to need so this uh, jewelry brings frictionless bearings and the pointer it is a light aluminum pointer and control springs jewelry bearings spindle 
everything is one so this is the twilio brings inside arrangements now we have seen this all in last class now at the same time what are the advantages of this pmmc coil so advantages already we known that so it is a high value of torque by weight ratio so torque to weight ratio is a high value so we are going to get deflection is very quick so minimum deflection we can easily identify it first thing it has a high torque by weight ratio at the same time second one is the it has a high accuracy so this mc coil moving coil instrument will give the accuracy is a very very high so already we have seen what is the accuracy so which an instrument reading approaches the true value of the variable being measured that value regarding this it should give the true value that is the definition we have seen next and at the same time it is third one is a this mc is a very sensitive instrument it sends the a minimum current in milli amperes micro amperes also it can detects just like the galvanometer and another advantage is the no need of a magnetic shield here we used so because the it itself magnet is very very strong operating field is developed due to the strong magnetic fields and at the same time and fifth one is the it consumes while the measuring in the field it consumes a very very low power that power nearly 25 to 200 so microwatts that means 25 microwatts means 25 into 10 to the power of minus 6 watts that is equal 25 by 6010000 this much of the power is consumed while using this type of the instruments that means it is not burden on the circuit these are the advantages what are the advantages so first advantage is the first advantage is the it has a high torque by weight ratio second advantage is the it is a high accuracy third advantage is the very sensitive instrument and fourth one is the no need of magnetic shielding due to the heat produces the it's strong magnetic field and it consumes the very low power while using the instrument this is the main five advantages of moving coil instruments now what are the disadvantages there is advantages at the same time there is a disadvantage also what are the disadvantages one so due to the this all for pencils value the cost of the equipment is very high cost is the very high and if cost is very high okay we purchased but this costly equipment will measure only dc not cannot be used for ac purpose that is the one disadvantages at the same time this instrument can measure only small amount of the current that may be nearly 100 milli amperes only but i want to measure the 1 ampere i can measure here so i require some additional equipments so these are the three disadvantages one is the high cost for this instrument and it can be only used for the dc and it is a limited carrying current capacity only 100 milli amperes so these are the disadvantages okay now coming to the what are the general errors occurred in the machine so errors are generally so already we have seen error systematic errors and that thing. so here error is the what are the errors so magnets are used due to the aging of effect the magnetic field may be decreases that is a one so due to the magnet the magnetic field may be decreased after 5 10 years 
due to the aging. At the same time, you are going to use the springs also here. The tension may be reduces. That is the one disadvantages or errors we can say. First error is the due to the aging of magnetic field may be changes. At the same time, the spring of tension may be changes. At the same time, the temperature changes automatically these all metals may be expand and contraction. So, error may be takes place after aging. These three errors may be possible in case of PMMC instruments. Now, where you are going to use this applications, we can use wherever we require to measure whether it is a voltmeter and ohmmeters. So, here today we are going to see that how we are going to extend the range of this PMC meter into voltmeter and ammeters. Okay, let us see. Now, deflecting torque of the PMC instruments. So, you can see here. So, there is a magnet, so you can see it. This is the magnet, and this is a coil. So, you can see this is a one coil having a, a length breadth of B breadth. There is a spindle here. So, this is a B by 2, B by 2 and on which there is a number of turns, coil is the owned on the aluminum frame, number of coils, turns, you can see this one. So, during the this magnetic field, north pole and south pole, there is a magnetic lines of forces from north pole to south pole, as you know. And once the current is passing through this coil, so it is also produced its own magnetic field. So, this is a rotor magnetic field, this is a stator magnetic field. Then due to this one, there is a torque is developed. The torque will try to move the spindle one direction. Let us assume here anti clockwise direction. This is I can see here in the figure clearly. So what will happen? So due to the force, so F1, this limb is coming this direction, this limb is going this direction. So just it is a moving anti clockwise direction. So then what will happen? Whatever the point is connected is a moving this direction. If reversed, the current is reversed, then automatically what will happen? It will move this direction, that is a DC. In DC, if you change the terminal plus to minus, minus to plus, the torque developed in the coil changes, the direction changes. So, now the torque, how much torque is developed? Let us see, calculate the basic principles, calculations. Now, Whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. This is a motor principle. Last class we have seen. Whenever a current current. So, what is the here? So, this is a magnet. So, it is a magnetic field. Now, I placed the I placed the, the coil, current carrying coil. So, it is a whenever a current carrying conductor, this current conductor placed in a magnetic field it experiences a force, the force is equal, here yeah, the, there is a mechanical force is developed here. That force is equal formula, what is the value? So, B flux density of this field and I the current passing through the coil, L length of the this coil and N number of turns of the coil. This is a terms, okay. Now, you can see. I is the current flowing through the coil, production of flux, B is the flux density for Weber's length of the coil meters and B is the breadth of the coil meters, okay. Now, so N is the number of tons. Now, what is the force? The force is equal to formula bill, you are going to pay the bill. So, B is the flux density and I is the current, L is the length of the coil into N, N is the number of tons. So, this much of the force is, the force is directly proportional to the, you can see what is happening. Here is the length of the conductor, we cannot change, number of times we cannot change and B and IR we are going to change. So, B is the flux developed and I is the current. So, here the force, you can see it. Now, there are the two forces F1 and F2 acting on the coil placed in between the a pole of a U-shaped magnet. 
one force F1 force on the one side of the coil and F2 force on second side of the coil. Now and therefore the total force F two forces are acting. So total force is equal to F1 one direction, F2 and another direction, but both directions are in the same way, both are in anti-clockwise directions. So both are acting in one direction only. Now same thing we are going to get the deflecting torque is equal to total force into perpendicular distance. We know that torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance. Now perpendicular distance from the spindle to one end. Now substitute the value. What is the total force? F1 plus F2 into. So total distance is the total coil distance is the B. I require the only half of the portion radius. We require the radius. So that is equal B by 2. That is equal. So we are going to. So F, F, both forces are equal. We can write it the 2F. So we can write it 2F into B by 2. 2 to get cancelled. So we are going to get that the deflecting torque is equal to F into B. So F is a force. B is the, the distance of the, the breadth of the coil. Now, so the deflecting torque is directly proportional to the N into B I L into B. Previously, we have seen force is equal B I L N. So, that is equal deflecting torque is equal to N B I L into B. Okay. So, now the deflecting torque is this one. The deflecting torque is directly proportional to the current flowing through the coil. In this case, so here the flux is a flux density is the permanent magnet. We cannot change and length of the coil we cannot change, breadth of the coil we cannot change number of turns we cannot change during the measurement of the instrument at any places. Every time you cannot change this all internal parts. But here only TD is directly proportional to the current. Deflecting torque is directly proportional to the current which is flowing in the coil. So that is the called deflecting torque is directly proportional to the current. That means if the current increases then automatically so torque will increase and so we can write it proportional constant if we are removed then TD is equal K into so current where K is the proportionally constant whereas I is the current in amperes. So at final deflection at whereas the deflecting torque equal to the controlling torque that is the final deflection. So deflecting torque equal to the controlling torque at that condition the diff TD deflecting torque is equal to the controlling TC controlling torque. The controlling torque may be spring control or gravity control. Now we can write it the TD deflecting torque is proportional to the current and where TC direct, directly proportional to the K into theta. So previously we have seen TC the spring control. So both E B T square by 2 L into theta. So, K is a constant, constant is the E is the angle modulus constant, B is the breadth and T is the thickness of the swing and 2L into LL is the length of the conductor. So, that is the material constant. Now, you can see it. So, now the controlling torque TC is directly proportional to the theta. If theta changes, the tension controlling torque also increases. Initially, the controlling torque is normally 0. If the deflecting torque developed and forced to move the pointer from the zero position to the some position, then when degree changes and angle changes, then automatically spring will the charged. The charging depend upon the angle of movement from initial position to the final position. So the controlling torque is directly proportional to the theta. Now you can see here uh, the I directly proportional to theta that is a scale is uniform due to the this formula. What is the formula? Scale is spring control is uniform due to the E B T square by 2 L theta Newton meters. Okay. Now you can see what is the what is a uniform non-uniform you may get sir. So it is not possible to get the all meters are not in yes no it is not uniform it is a one AC meters are the not uniform meters. Moving iron instruments are not uniform these are cramped that means what do you mean the cramped and uniform you can see here. Here what is happening? The scale is uniform. You can observe this is a physical one instrument. Here is the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So 0 to 1 there is a 5 digits, 1 to 2 5 digits and 2 to 3 5 digits, 3 to 4 5 digits and 4 to 5 5 digits. This 1 to 0 to 1 the distance you can observe it and 1 to 2 distance observe it, 2 to 3 distance observe it and 3 to 4 distance observe it. All are uniformly so subdivisions that is a uniform scale in DC. Whereas in case you can see here, so I can remove this one. This is AC. So here you can see it. DC is equal. To, it just indicates AC is equal. To, this is a sinusoidal. So this is a DC instruments. This is a AC instruments. Scale is uniform here. Here scale is what will happen? Startingly and after that it is a going one this one. So starting ending there is a scale is cramped and in middle scale is uniform. That means if you observe the distance at starting 0 to 100 you can see it, the, the distance between the 0 to 100 and 100 to 200 you can see the distance and 200 to 300 you can see the distance now distance is gone increasing. 300 to 400 you can see the distance you can see 10, 10 units after that 400 to 500 you can see the distance now the distance is not uniform so it is a calibrated such a way that because due to the ac nature moving air instruments so we can say the year the scale the distance here the this this distance and this distance and this distance and this distance and this distance because here what will happen so from here so this is a 0 1 2 3 4 5 so well between these two one unit 1 to 2 one unit 2 to 3 one unit and 3 to 4 one unit 4 to 5 unit so everywhere this one units only but distance movement angle you can see that angle this is a theta angle and this is the theta angle and this is the theta angle you can see it so the deflection theta angle is does not equal that's the arc we can see the theta is called arc, uh, lr so here arc is the this arc may not be length of the arc is, may not be equal in this all units so we can say uh, starting the arc the angle is minimum here also minimum but in middle so it is go on increasing and decreasing so we can say this is known as a cramped cramped scale at starting at ending in case of moving iron instruments but it is not possible it is not this mistake in our moving iron moving car instru mc instruments moving car instruments this angle and this angle this angle are all uniform suppose for example uh, 10 degrees and 10 degrees 10 degrees in case of mo moving coil but in case of moving iron instruments here is a 10 degrees, here is a 20 degrees, here is a 30 degrees, here is a 40 degrees, here is a 20 de 30 degrees and 20 degrees and 10 degrees. So angle changing. So this is known, we can say this is a scale is cramped in case of moving an instruments and scale is uniform in case of moving DC instruments. Okay. Now. So ammeter always connected in series with the supply and load as we know that ammeter has so turns it has a very very low resistance coil as we know that it consumes the how much is a very very low micro watts milliwatts so that so that's why the resistance in the circuit is a very very low if resistance in the coil is more on unnecessarily i square r drop voltage drop and i square rt by j heat will develops i square r power loss will take place to minimize this one we are going to place in the coil in, in the form of the coil is a very low resistive coil so this coil that's why so high low resistance if you connect it directly to the high supply the current will spoil the meter so that's why ammeter always connected in series with the supply and load so in addition to the load load it has to take the load support otherwise what will happen just you assume that ammeter is nothing but very old person who has the age of 
above 70 years. The 70 year person he cannot walk without holding stick. So what will happen? So he, he has no energy. So he will walk based on it as hand stick. Here the hand stick is nothing but our load. And the person, whole person is nothing but our ammeter. So because there is no, uh, we can say this, uh, uh, there is no antibiotic power. So that's why this person should be helpful to walk with the help of the stick. Similarly, our meter should be connected with in series with the load where load has a high resistance value. So our meter will protect. Now you can see the, the example of our ammeter, how the ammeter is connected. Now in this case, uh, this is a source, battery is connected, simple explanation purpose. This is a load, you are connected to the bulb, for example, you are connected to the bulb. Okay, now whatever the current is passing through this one circuit is closed, bulb will glow. During this place, enter the current, leaving current, inside there is a mechanism takes place, that is the what we have seen previously. So based on this load current, the deflection DD is developed, deflection torque is developed, and when deflecting torque and controlling torque are uh, opposite each other and uniform, then pointer will show the pointer. That pointer will the actual current consumed by this load. With that may be 0 to 5 amperes range and it may be 1 ampere or 2 ampere, 3 ampere based on the load you are connected. That's why. So here, if you are connected this load, suppose if you are going, what will happen here? if directly you are connected to the source here and your load is connected this ammeter is connected here directly so ammeter now it is connected positive now it is connected you remove this one simply you connected to the negative whenever you are going to connect this one immediately this will gives the smoke it will give the smoke spark and after that this meter will not work. Why? Because this having the voltage of 1.5 volts and simply it's a low resistance then you are going to short circuit the direct with this cell. Once plus and minus is directly connected heavy current flows then it will discharge fully and burn out. Similarly the our ammeter coil has a very low resistance due to this one it will draw some more current that current will flows i square r t by j that much of the heat is developed here so that heat that current heat is equal i square r t by j so that means resistance is a very very low in ammeter and so whatever the heat is directly proportional to the current. So due to the lower resistance, current is very, very high, short circuit current. Due to this one time passes, J is a 4.2 joule constant and heavy heat will develop. That heat will burns the insulation on the copper winding. The insulation, as we know that whether it is a class type, A type or B type or C type, F type, also we known. So based on this high temperature, the insulation enamel coating on the coil burns out, total winding will burns. So the meter will not work if you are connected bypassing the load. So students be careful while you are doing in any industry or anywhere, a meter should not be connected directly to the supply ammeter because it has a low resistance value you should connect through some high resistance load then it will protect and it will give the reading otherwise first it will burn out total circuit will collapse remember this thing okay now so it represented this one now this is called supply equal ammeter is indicated this one entering you take in the dc plus it's a leaving the minus 
okay this is a lot this is a lot now onwards so we can represent this ammeter is this direction in the label okay now you can see ammeter connected in series with the supply along with the shunt resistance to increase the range of ammeters okay here what is the problem now we connected so load is connected here ammeter is connected now you are connected the one bulb and is connected here now this bulb is connected for example you take that uh, for example here dc in laboratory now you connected here uh, for example you take it um, 220 volts dc supply in laboratory plus minus now this is a bulb 230 incandescent lamp just we are using in our uh, houses incandescent lamp so during this one it will draw the current for example 1 ampere will current will draws this range is called only 0 to 1 ampere reading now it full scale deflection when it draws the current of 1 ampere if you are connected the 200 watts bulb then so it's showing the 1 ampere no problem now i connected the another bulb in parallel then automatically the current may be instead of 2 am 1 ampere it now it may be 2 amperes once 2 amperes coming here but it bearable only 1 ampere now it is a, it is a drawing the 2 amperes then the meter will spoil the more the meter will burn out definitely because it's a full load current capacity is the 1 ampere only instead of 1 ampere so now current is flowing 2 amperes the meter will burn out suppose i connected the another bulb then current may be 3 amperes now it will burn out so what what to do how to measure this values same 1 ampere a meter i want to measure the nearly 10 bulbs that means 10 amperes i want to measure what to do so i can do it with the help of some extra fitting so i connect some shunt or very low resistance with parallel to the our meter so i can extend the the current up to 10 amperes after calibration of connecting the shunt resistance with parallel to the our instrument then so below 10 amperes whatever the load current will show the value that means the deflection value into multiplication factor you have to multiply that thing that is called n i n is equal to capital i by the meter current capacity we will do that also so deflection into this multiplication factor we are going to know that what is the current taken by the bulbs whether the three bulbs or four bulbs five bulbs below the 10 bulbs from one ampere capacity instrument is extended to 10 amperes measurement instrument so that is known as the enhancement of a meter from one ampere to the 10 amperes with help of the shunt resistance the shunt resistance always very very less as compared to the meter resistance for example meter resistance value may be 0 0.02 ohms now the shunt resistance which is going to connect to that so nearly 0 0.00002 ohms such a way that we have to connect because if connected the low resistance comparing to the meter resistance whatever the extra current comes is diverted through the this shunt resistance that is our aim so let us see here now you can see same here you can see for example this is a ammeter let us assume it is arranging of 1 ampere so having the resistance of 0 0.02 ohms that is a r meter reading 
the coil because inside there is a coil it has a resistance of 0 0.0 ohms very low because we have to connect this very low resistance. Now I want to measure this load is maybe 10 amperes. So I want to measure the this much of the current. So that purpose I connected the one resistance this resistance the shunt resistance shunt resistance. This shunt resistance used and having the resistance of for example rm meter resistance this is the meter this is called what is the value 0 0.02 ohms now the shunt resistance rsh shunt resistance that should be less than this value that is called 0 0.0002 ohms then what will happen here resistance of 0 0.02 this resistance the 0 0.0002 so low resistance then what about the current is coming from the supply drawing from this one it is a sum of the current what about the rated current 0 0.02 this is that is current that way for example 1 ampere will flows here remaining excess current will flow through this one and once again meet applying the KCL so we are going to the load so at that condition what is the deflection here that reading into multiplication factor of the set we are going to get the actual current consumed by the load we can measure it okay now this is a one example so here what is happening just whatever the ammeter value so this is taken the so what is the resistance inside that is a 0 0.02 ohms and it is a measuring value is only 1 ampere capacity one more than 1 ampere if you are connected it will spile now we are connected the some load external load bulb is connected here now what is the purpose now here you are instead of 1 ampere 100 amperes has to be measured very small equipment with this small equipment I am going to measure nearly up to 100 amperes so with help of the shunt you can see the shunt resist s so that means here whatever the input current 100 amperes coming but it will take the only one ampere because the capacity of the eating capacity is the only maximum one ampere or more than one ampere it will vomiting so here so it can bear the only one ampere remaining 100 minus 1 that is equal 99 amperes is a diverted the topic is diverted to the shunt here shunt material ok so this is a generally the shunt is connected to the magnetic magnetic material generally used in case of the DC connected in series with the coil ok so this is a material and sometimes in case of the AC we are going to use the constant and material so magnetic and constant materials are the not subjected to the temperature changes because all metals are subjected to the temperature coefficient that is the alpha if temperature changes the temperature coefficient of the resistive material changes then automatically if resistance temperature changes resistance changes if the resistance changes current changes if the current changes deflection changes if the deflection changes our reading also wrong readings to avoid that one if the temperature changes then our meter should shows the, the accuracy that purpose we are going to use the some special type of the materials for the uh, PMMC we are going to use the magnetic 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 material and for the AC we are going to use the constant material ok so even after that we are using that one so we are going to some uh, swapping also we required swamping resistance also connected in the series we will see later first of all uh, this how we are going to solve this problem ok so, dear students here what will happen so it is um, we have the one ammeter so this ammeter capacity is the uh, only what is the value what is the range only you can see it what is the range it is uh, our meter is the range is the ammeter range is the one ampere only but I want to measure the 100 amperes because it is drawing the 100 amperes. 
So here 1 ampere, 100 minus 99, 99 amperes flowing through the shunt. So during this process, it shows us some deflection, some values. For example, 0.3 showing the some full scale deflection is 1 ampere. Now it is going to the only 0.3. Now, this 0.3 into n, we are going to get that actual current taken by the load. So, this n is equal constant of the meter. How we are going to calculate? Let us see. Okay. So, now in this case, I want to know that this resistance, sir, how much resistance we have to connect in parallel, sir? That is the R shunt. So, that purpose we have the one equation. What is the equation? Let us do that equation first. Now, same thing here connected the, for example, here connected the one ammeter. Okay. Now, here connected the one shunter resistance and is going to the load current. Now, what is that? This is a total current, IE's current is coming. Okay. Now, this is the ammeter. Ammeter has an internal resistance of we can say R G or you can say R M meter resistance. Okay. Now it has the current ranging of I G I to the I M. You can say the I M. You can say so what is the current taken? I M. What is the resistance? R M. Now in this case, what is the current? Total current minus this current. Apply the KCL. Now this current is the I minus I m is flowing through the this one. Now here we can say this R s shunt resistance. Okay, so we converted into our electrical circuits. The so current is coming here, and whatever the meter value we are taking the these constant values. That is called it is a mag the meter current and meter resistance values. Okay, now. So, based on this one, I am going to calculate. Okay, it's gone now. Okay, no problem. One second, I will write. Now, what has happened? Here, meter reading, it has a RM IM. Okay, that is called IM current is taking, and here is connected the one shunt value that is called RSH. The current is a input current is equal. I current is coming from this one some of the current flowing here some of the current flowing here this current we can write it what is the current I minus I m meter current okay now same current is flowing now we can see it so both are now this circuit and this circuit are both are parallel so as per our knowledge now we can see write it write it what is this one so, what is the both are potential differences are equal. So, this drop is equal to this drop. Okay. Now, what is the formula? Now, I can write it I m R m voltage this into this is equal to this current into this resistance I into R. What is the current here? I minus I m okay, into what is the R s h? So, I into R i into r now i want to know that what is the rsh okay i want to know the rsh that comes to here what will happen so this is comes to the i minus im is equal to rsh okay this simplify it so this resistance is equal to so we are going to get it okay it's correct this into this Okay, um, or you can uh, okay, then simplify this one. What is the equation? Let us do once again. So, here the current is equal to IM RM is equal to the current here. I mind this is the current is I, okay, this is the current is I. I minus I M R yes. Okay. Now I M R M is equal to I into 
R S not it I think so simply it is a R S shunt is equal you can write it here I minus I M okay so that means you are going to get it hmm. if you know the I M is known meter radio known if you know the resistance is known if you know the what is the value of the current you are going to measure known and we know this one so substituting this values we are going to get a known shunt resistance from this shunt resistance we are going to calculate what is the value okay so this way you are going to find that values okay so now this can be simplified so wow so r shunt is equal can i i can write it so here this is equal to rm by so multiply by so this comes to the this direction so here i m and i m so comes to the one this a i m by i so that i can write it that is called m minus 1 is equal to r shunt where m is equal to multiplication factor m is equal what is the current so total current by meter current that is equal to im so same na no? total current by this is equal we can take as a m m minus this is a 1 you are going to rm by this value so that means rsh unknown resistor shunt resistance which is you are going to connect to measure the up to the range of 100 amperes so you are going to connect so rm a known value m minus 1 so this is a thing you are going to find it basic equation you practice it okay so from this equation we are going to calculate this one so i want to note what is the this value for example in this case i want to know this value what is the s what is the formula that formula is equal to r s is equal to what is the value r m by m minus 1 okay so r m is equal to how much given 0.02 you substitute what is the m m is equal to i by i m so i is equal to 100 amperes and i m is equal to how much 1 ampere okay so then we are going to get it so 100 amperes here that m is equal to 100 times okay m is equal to 100 times now so 100 this one r m is equal to how much 0.02 by m is equal to how much we are going to 100 minus 1 that is the 99 so we are going to get this value is equal to, so it's 0.02 by 99 nearly 100 so that maybe you are going to get that 0.0002 ohms that means here this resistance is for 0.02 this resistance is a very very low you can see it that means 0.002 ohms you are going to connect in parallel with the, our um, ammeter so that we are going to measure the unknown current from 0 to 100 amperes based on our deflection so if you are showing the deflection here for example here max is a 1 ampere suppose it is showing the 6 my 0.6 value shows what is the value now what is the m what is the n here 100 so 0.6 into n so 0.6 is a 0.6 into 100 so what is the value then we are going to the 60 amperes so instead of 1 ampere it's showing the 60 amperes so based on the fraction we are going to calculate this value okay i think you just you practice the problems you can get the good idea okay similarly you do the this problems okay here n is equal to, so i by ig or we can see the im okay so now we are going to get the what is the resistance we calculate pi and 0, 0, 0, 2. so this the resistance is the very very low because most of the current has to divert here otherwise the distance is more than this one so most current will cross here that's why you have to keep in mind the resistance should be very low values okay now so here is one problem is given what is that problem so it's simple you do it a galvanometer having an internal resistance so values are given rg is given so that is equal rg is equal we can say the, the internal rm that is equal how much is the 15 ohms is given that means simple you are remember 
this one, this one, and this one. Here is a 15 ohms is given. And ohms full scale deflection of with a Ig is called 10 meter. Here, what is a Ig? Ig is equal to the meter reading. So, galvanometer current maximum reading how much? So, 10 milliamperes. 10 milliamperes. Okay. 10 milliamperes. Is a, so, I know that. So, resistance, we know the current. Based on this one, I am going to equal values here. Okay. And it is to be converted an ammeter of range of 10 amp. Here, 10 amperes, I am going to find it. Find the shunt resistance. What is the resistance here? Okay. So, we know that Rs. So, Rs is equal to, what is the formula? Previously, we calculated that is equal to Rm. Rm is equal to here Rg divided by m minus 1. Okay. So, what is the m? m is equal to what is the I by Ig? What is the I? 10 amperes. What is the Ig? 10 milliamperes. 10 into 10 to the power of minus 3 amperes. Okay. Then, so you are going to get what is the value? It will go to the top 0, 0. It cancels. So, nearly 1000 times. N is equal to 1000 times. Now, you substitute here 1000 minus N. What is the RG? Or is 15 by m minus 1000 minus 1. So, 9999. Okay. So, 15 by 99 we are going to get the, so this resistance value. Okay. We do it in practice. Simply substitute the value. Once again, dear student, you can say, remember that here what we have seen. Now, first is whatever the values is given. So, this is a R, G or R M galvanometer resistance, galvanometer full scale reading. It given the milliamperes. Here. Remember it. Now here I am going to find that 10 amperes. Now I want to know that how much resistance I am going to connect here. That means here. So just apply the formula. This into this I into R is equal to I into R. So 100 minus 10 milliamperes. That current is flowing here. It this one this. So, we know this value, we know this value, we know this value, we know this value. So, unknown value this one, just you find it, substitute the value 15 by 1000 nearly. That is a current is a very, very, very less, less than, what is that? 15, 15 ohms here, if here itself 15 ohms, that should be below the 15 ohms. Okay, 15 by 1000, what is the value? You do it, that is the assignment to you. Okay, so next class you are going to submit this problem clarity okay so this is a problem now i think so working of pmmc as a ammeter now we have seen the extension of that one okay i think students so already time is more than one hour so here we will stop and we will continue the next class okay thank you for listening